<laughs> I was muted. Hi everyone, welcome back to another workshop between Scape. So uh, this has been thankfully broadcasted and is in collabor- What am I saying? This stream is in collaboration between the Rainbow Six Singapore community, which is R6SC for short, and Scape's community rallies. And today we will be covering refining your operator experience. But before we get started, there's something I would like to mention, especially for those who have already participated in a few of the other workshops. There is a bonus reward where if you have participated actively, which means you have at least played one game for that specific workshop, right? You can't just um, tune into the stream or be just, you know, floating around. You have to actually participate. If you have participated in at least three of these workshops, you'll be receiving 2,400 credits. So... Free credits, good stuff. If you have already signed up for uh, another workshop or you maybe you're missing one more workshop for this bonus credits, I highly suggest you sign up for the next one, which is on 3rd October. And uh, receive free credits, receive some extra knowledge, uh, get free kills on ranked, uh, maybe, maybe get diamond, I don't know. So, uh, yes, free credits, free knowledge. It's always good. Is there still three more? And <laughs> no, <laughs> go play Go for. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Um, is there anything I'm missing? Yeah, basically, 
join the R6SC Discord if you want to join the uh, Singapore Community Discord. Uh, feel free to type in a Twitch chat. There should be some moderators who will you know, answer your queries. And also do follow this Skate Esports channel uh, for other workshops as well for different games. It's not just Rainbow Six. So tune into those. Uh, yes, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Twitch chat. If not, if you are a participant, we have already sent you the Discord. You can feel free to ask in the questions uh, questions chat channel in the Discord. Or if not, just put in the workshop chat or ask the admins around, which is Hipster Fox, Wensler, uh, Anointed, or if not, Quicks. So yeah, just feel free to ask for that. And if you enjoyed today's lesson, as I said, feel free to sign up for the next one on 3rd October. And without further ado... Oh, yes. Please keep... <laughs> Please keep the topics uh, or questions within the topics today, which is more about the operator rather than uh, the overall game. I can answer questions outside of the topic. However, uh, I won't be entertaining all of them so that uh, it doesn't overlap through the different workshops. And uh, if you need a refresher from the past workshops, I will be bringing up some old stuff as well. So uh, feel free to ask questions even if you've already gone through the past workshops but you forget something, yeah. Where's my coffee? Always got my coffee, dude. It's so early in the morning, bro. Alright, let's get started. Just a short intro again to myself. Who am I? I am Geraldo. That's my real name. I'm Geraldo Playbox Goana. Um, my rank is Diamond every season. Uh, I've been playing for about 4 years plus plus. Uh, I currently play for a team and I'm the in-game leader. I play utility and flex operators like example Capital, IQ, Gridlock, Nomad. Um, my socials are... Here, Geraldo G's for my Instagram. My Twitter is Playbox Arena. Um, feel free to follow those if you think I am, I don't know, funny or I helped you learn something, yeah? So, yeah. So, uh, this is just like a content page. So, what we'll be covering between part one and part two. So, uh, this will be segregated in, uh, segregated, separated into like uh, 15 minutes of theory, 45 minutes of gameplay, 15 minutes of theory, 45 minutes of gameplay. We'll adjust it. Here and there. Today we'll be ending at about 1.45 p.m. Because uh, there'll be another uh, event going on on this channel after this. So um, stay tuned to the Scapes Esports channel as there'll be something else after this workshop. So yeah, part one will be covering just um, how to set up your operators and what guns you should be using and uh, secondary gadgets, attachments. Uh, what is rotation utility? We've covered rotation in the past few workshops. And also which operators have what? And then we have a bit of a QA and a if we have a bit of spare time. And in part 2, we'll also be covering the similar stuff, except it'll be on the attacking side. And also, some gadgets and secondary gadgets to choose, like how do you decide what to bring for the different situations. So yeah, later when I'll be speculating, I'll be covering the defending side first only, and then also we'll be moving on to the attacking side for part 2. So yes, part 1, gun choices. So I've always been covering this operator smoke and I think you all also have been um, able to identify why. Especially for people who have at least played a bit more, you would realize this operator is very, very, very useful, very, very strong. So a lot of the mistakes that I've seen some people bring is um, they will be bringing the FMG9, which is the SMG, if you can see my cursor. Uh, I highly recommend you not to bring this gun. Can you see my cursor? I think so. I highly recommend you not to bring this as um, the shotgun is actually very, very useful, especially in a team setting where you can open up angles. Uh, as you know, shotguns can break through soft wall easier and it breaks that wooden beam so you can actually walk through the walls. So this is very useful to open up rotations between bomb sites, if not just open up rotations along the way. Or uh, if you have smoke especially, you can open up a shotgun hole, quickly throw a smoke canister. So yeah, that's just something to note. Uh, this is just some notes on the side, a bit of text. Um, so yeah, it's mainly for opening lines of sights. And it's also very strong at holding close range angles. So let's say uh, there's a really tight doorway, right? You can hold that doorway with a shotgun and I would say 80% of the time you should win that. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to hit the table. You should win that gunfight. So that's just something uh, good to know. Um, the SMG-11 over the pistol is definitely, uh, in my opinion, it may be a bit... Uh, intimidating to learn this weapon as it has a very very high recoil but um i really recommend you spend a bit of time learning how to use this weapon as actually one of the best guns in the game especially for close range combat and also at the same time 
being an SMG instead of a pistol, you uh, have access to optics like holographic sights or reflex sight, whatever is your preference, and um, that makes it easier to kill players further away. So yeah, there's something to note. It's painful to use, yeah, but SMG-11, I, I would really recommend you learn how to use it. It's, it's very, very, very uh, useful to learn, I would say, especially because it's commonly used across two different operators and on both sides, so, and they're common operators, so I, I recommend you learning it. Is there a VOD of older workshops? There should be a VOD in the Scapes Esports channel. Yes, thanks for asking. Um, so yeah, secondary gadgets. So this would be things like barbed wires, deployables, uh, sensors, everything like this. So uh, a good note, especially for newer players, um, barbed wire is probably the most, uh, you can never really go wrong with it kind of gadget. It's, it's kind of like, if you don't know what to bring, you should always just bring Bob. You can really never go wrong with bringing Bob. So uh, that's just something to note. So Bob slows players, as you know, and it also gives you a sound indication uh, if someone melees it or breaks it. So yeah, that's something good to note. Um, deployable shield. Uh, deployable shield has got a buff recently. I think uh, not recently, quite quite a while ago, where it kind of works as a mini uh, mirror where you can see through a bit. So it's always very good, especially for long hallways. So let's say there's not much cover because it's just a long empty hallway. There's no like tables or cover. A deployable shield is a very good way to put up a form of uh, indestructible cover, uh, where you can also watch the hallway without having to like uh, peek it and check it, risking your life. So uh, deployable shields are used this way usually. So yeah, that's something to note. Try to put them near doors or uh, put them in long hallways as I said. Or if you have to hold a very, um, how to say, like a very tough angle as there's just no cover at all in general, then yeah, a deployable shield is basically a way to bring like a mini wall kind of thing. I heard it's a bad place to place it in uh, doorways since you have to vault through uh that's 50 50 right because if you think about it that would mean the enemy would have to vault through as well so you know it's, it's kind of like a vice versa so especially let's say the enemy is playing a monty or a blitz or a fuse of shield shields a uh, deployable shields are probably a, uh, one of the better ways to counter shield operators as if they vault through they would expose their arm and their feet so that that leads to a free kill so it, it's kind of like a a play in between, right? Um, so yeah, next operator I'll be talking about would be uh, Jaeger. So Jaeger is, as I said, we've been covering this for I think the past three, two workshops maybe at least, where Jaeger, he's a very versatile operator. You can never go wrong with it basically. Like 99% of the time, any bomb site, any, anything, just bring Jaeger. Let me drink a bit of coffee. Looking for that coffee sponsor, baby. All right, so <clears throat> in uh, general, right, you should always use the rifle across every operator, right? Try not to bring like, um, if you have if access to an assault rifle or like any auto rifle in general, like SMG, you should always use those over like DMRs or shotguns uh, in general, right? Not, not on smoke. As I said, smoke has a different job as we covered last week on jobs, like roles of different operators. Um, Smoke's role for the team is to open these lines, uh, lines of sights and rotations. That's why he would require his shotgun. So if you watch pro players as well, you would almost never see a smoke player carry his SMG instead of the uh, shotgun. So yeah, that's something to note. This is simply just because auto rifles are way more consistent where you can fight long range angles and it's not to say you can't contest close range. Whereas example for shotguns, you can only contest close range but you cannot contest the far range. So yes. Good morning, Rin. <laughs> All right. So um, <clears throat> Jaeger's secondary gadgets. Right now, he has access to the bulletproof camera. A lot of people use the abbreviation of BC. So if you hear me accidentally say that, uh, I do apologize <laughs> because I'm very used to saying BC over bulletproof. But yeah, just know that bulletproof cameras are BC. Um, so now he has access to barbed wires as well. So what is a BC used for or a bulletproof cam? Um, it's also very good for long hallways, especially with not much cover because instead of having to peek it and risk your life, you just have this camera which watches the whole hallway so you can sit down at, at some safe location behind a table maybe and, and just flip through the camera. So when should you bring a bulletproof camera? 
you should always bring a bulletproof camera if there's already enough like barbed wires, nitro cells, which I'll be covering, I think, the next slide. So bulletproof camera is just like a, a good alternative if especially your team does not have much uh, intel. And we've covered last week as well, not last week, on the last workshop as well, where information and intel is probably a defender's and attacker's best friend, right? So things like bulletproof camera, let's say you don't play Valkyrie, you don't play Echo, Maestro, all these operators that can give you extra information with their cameras and gadgets. A bulletproof camera is like a, a good alternative or like a cheap alternative. So yeah, this is just a, something to note. Uh, but why is the exact same thing where you just bring it if no one else is bringing it. Um, if you have questions on like uh, how many you should have, what's a good lineup, feel free to ask as well in the chat. But in general, I would say Bob wise, you try to have at least two sets. But let's say you're playing Legion or Ella, you may only need one set of Bob, which means two, right? Which is one operator with barbs. So that's something to note. All right. Okay. So now, um, proximity alarms, which are, if I'm not wrong, the newest gadget, I think. No. No, they came out with Malusi. No, I'm sorry. Still wave. But basically one of the newest gadgets. It is the newest gadget for defenders. So what this is, it, it's kind of like a barbed wire where it gives you information that a guy is actually pushing down that specific hallway or a door. Um, however, proximity alarms do not uh, slow the enemy. Instead, they just give you a very loud, <clears throat> very loud sound indication. <laughs> so... Um, when would you actually use a proximity alarm over barbed wire is usually if there's a very tough spot to put um let's say let's say a barbed wire you put it by a doorway or not, not let's not say a doorway let's say um let's say a ramp or something right a barbed wire would be better because it would require the enemy to walk through it which exposes themselves if not they would have to melee it which also exposes themselves um, however, a proximity alarm is especially useful if you can hide it somewhere. If not, uh, if you just need that little sound indication or you can put it in a, in a way which, let's say, let's say if an enemy enters through a door, there's a left and a right, okay? You can put it on the right side. You can put that as in the proximity alarm on the right side of the door while you play on the left side. That way, if the enemy were to shoot the proximity alarm, his back would be facing you, exposing himself towards you. So it's like um, you've been faked or juked kind of thing. If not, it just really makes it very tough for them to destroy because let's say a barbed wire on a door is very easy to melee from the outside of the door. Whereas a proximity alarm would require you to enter the room just to clear it. So if that makes sense. Personally, I still prefer the use of barbed wires because I'm a bit more traditional. But yeah, impact grenades. Impact grenades are... The best things to have almost all the time as a roamer, if not nitro cells, but uh, basically impact grenades uh, help you open rotations without the use of shotguns. So you just chuck a nade, boom, bam. You now have a rotation and uh, the way you can hold the bomb site is a lot more fluid and dynamic. So something to note. Usually you would always have one set of impact grenades in your team. If not, you would at least have two shotguns. So yeah, this is also good for roamers as let's say you're caught in a pinch and you're stuck in a room. You now have a quick way to open up a hatch or open up a wall and rotate out of there and stay safe. Alright, so holographic. This is our optics. Also today, there's a bit more theory. So um, I'll try to cover as much as I can because, you know, morning everyone's a bit tired. But uh, I hope you can bear with it. Because uh, only on the this side, on the defending side, there's a bit more slides to cover. While on attacking, there's a bit less. So maybe we can play a bit more later on the part 2 as compared to part one. All right, holographic, probably everyone's favorite scope uh, for a one time zoom. Um, this is because it's um, very balanced side, like the housing, which means the, um, the casing of the scope, right, basically. It's not too big, neither is it the smallest, but it's not too big where it blocks too much of your screen. Uh, the optic itself, as in the sight itself, it's rather clear with a dot in the middle that's very thin, so it doesn't block the enemy's head too much. Um, the next would be reflex, which is also like probably the next most used. Uh, it has the smallest housing, which means it blocks the least of your screen. Uh, and yeah, that's basically the only perk of a reflex. It blocks the least of the screen. However, most people find it 
a bit harder to hold um, very tight angles where you only have like maybe two or three pixels to just see a player because that reflex sight actually blocks the hit quite a bit if you're aiming too high. So that's just something to note. But keep in mind, sights are mostly personal preference, so feel free to play around. However, my personal recommendation is that you should always use the same sights across every gun because that makes it more consistent. Especially now with the new ADS sensitivity conversions, it's a lot better to use the same one so that your aim doesn't get wonky across different sites. And you're just more consistent as a player, your aims will be more consistent basically, you get more kills most likely. So yeah, that's just something to note. Iron Sight, as I said, talking about consistency, Iron Sight is probably the worst for consistency. This is simply because Iron Sights across every gun is actually different. It can be similar, however, there's going to be a few changes, which it still means inconsistencies. So I would say if you really want to have uh, a more consistent aim, right, you should always use a scope like Hollow Sight, Reflex Sight, ACOG, whatever, because they are common across all guns. So yeah, that's something to note. Let's see, ACOG best sight. Uh, I personally still use the ACOG if it's available. Uh, Bandit Iron Sights. It's, it's, it's still preference, I would say. However, as I'm saying, I like the Iron Sight. Personally, I like Iron Sights a lot on a lot of guns. However, I would still say I recommend using Holographic Sight, especially if you're not very comfortable or confident in your aim, because this promotes consistency, basically. Yeah. Like, if nothing is different, you know, there's less things to blame as well. Red Dot, probably the least used site overall. Um, I personally don't recommend players to use the Red Dot site. There are a few pro players, like maybe one or two in the entire of international, but um, this is because the dot on the Red Dot is a bit too big, which means if you're holding a very um, tight angle, like a doorway or something, it's very hard for you to actually see where the enemy is. Considering that the dot is so large, it may block the player model's head. So it's a bit hard to get headshots, in my opinion. And the housing is actually the largest amongst all these 1x scopes. Yes, I know I have to build the custom lobby. However, it has a 30-minute cooldown, Fox. <laughs> I can't create the lobby for it to just close. I would have a 5-minute delay and I couldn't create a lobby again. Uh, would lowering the opacity for the red dot make it better? Um, I would say yeah, but in my opinion, if that's the case, you might as well use the hollow sight kind of thing. <laughs> so, but you know, if you feel that you're more consistent on the red dot, use the red dot. Red dot's found across basically all the guns. So yeah, barrels. Barrels, barrels, barrels. Barrels are probably the things that a lot of players get very, very confused about. So, um, basically, no barrel. Don't do it. <laughs> Bring a barrel. Even if you use a bad barrel, it's always better than having no barrel. Because no barrel means you have no benefit, no recoil reduction, nothing extra. So I always recommend you use a barrel. Always use a barrel, okay? Always use a barrel. Okay? Suppressor. I don't recommend it. However, if you find that you already can control recoil, and if you find that you are getting a lot of headshots, you can try. Personally, I don't use it. However, right now, it's kind of like a new wave where a lot of these um, top fraggers in especially the Asian Pacific region, like Japan, Korea, Asia, Southeast Asia, I mean, a lot of us are using, not a lot, but a few a few of the fraggers are using suppressors nowadays. So figure it out yourself. If you find that there's no need to use other barrels because you have good headshot percentage, I would say a good headshot percentage is at least at least 45%. So if you're not at 45%, I think I recommend you use other barrels. Flash hider. The most used grip. Uh most used barrel. I personally recommend a flash hider 90% of the time. Um flash hider is the best at reducing recoil in every way basically you can burst fire you can spray you can tap it's the best okay for lowering recoil um however let's say you don't need this reduction in recoil let's say you're using a very very easy gun to control like um i don't know maybe vigils k1a or uh allegiance t5 smg 
You can try using things like compensators where compensators reduce the spread of the rifle. It doesn't reduce the recoil, but it it's good if you can already control recoil. So like UMP, UMP probably the easiest gun, a laser beam of a weapon, low fire rate, low recoil. You can try using compensator because you don't need that extra reduction in recoil from a flash hider. So might as well you get that bonus from a compensator by reducing your spread, tightening your spread so you can take longer gunfights. The extended barrels, talking about long gunfights, especially good for guns with low recoil. Uh, it provides no benefit to the spread or, re or uh, recoil though, like um, at least compensator reduces the spread. However, extended barrel, uh, it just maintains the damage. Personally, I don't use the extended barrel. I only use it at most on a UMP because a UMP has a high base damage, which means like um, the amount of bullets it takes to kill a player is very little or less than other guns. Thus, if you use an extended barrel, you can really make use of that extra damage from the gun, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Don't extended barrels and suppressors expose your locations in a corner more? No. Extended barrels? No. <laughs> suppressors reduce. So basically, there's no hit indication. So let's say you're shooting a guy on the left. A uh, suppressor would mean that even though the guy can probably hear the bullet, he cannot see where it's coming from. Like, there's no indication like left or right, basically. And it is softer. Just a bit. Let's see. Spread vs. recoil. What's the diff? Um, spread basically, let's say let's say you were to spray a wall with uh, a gun, right? Three times. You use three magazines, so 90 bullets, right? You spray a wall. A spread basically is, when someone says it's a tight spread, it means that the bullets, if you're not controlling the recoil at all, the bullets are rather close to one another. So this means that there's not much horizontal um, like bullet spread also, which, you know, means that it's, it's very controllable recoil because it's just going up. So that's a spread. However, recoil means that it's more of like the, uh, I would say recoil is more of like the vertical where recoil, let's say a gun has high recoil, like Buck's weapon, where you would require you to pull down your mouse a lot just to control the recoil. That means that it's a high recoil gun. Whereas like a MP5 or a UMP, right? If you pull down, you don't have to pull down much. Maybe you just use your wrist and pull down just a bit and you would have a laser beam spread. Yeah, that's the difference between a spread and recoil. Hey, thank you, Ted, for following. Um, all right, so I hope that answers your question. Next, grips, 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 grips. Something, um, yeah, grips, grips. Something else which is quite in oh, elegant. Is there something I miss? What about elegant? As in the barrel? Personally, Ella, I use flash, <laughs> but. I know a lot of people that use compensator. I think it's still preference. The gun is rather uncontrollable anyways, by by nature, so yeah. Coffee break. Alright. Grips. None. Don't do that. Don't bring no grip. Okay? You're, you're trolling. <laughs> Always bring a grip. Why? No grip means no benefit. No benefit means why? You know, no point. Don't do that. But, vertical grip. Let's go vertical grip. Vertical grip, I especially recommend it, especially if you're not uh, very good at, or very comfortable at controlling a gun's recoil. So let's say a very common operator like Hibana or Thermite, right? Their guns are a bit shaky. Like, uh, Thermite has low fire rate weapons. However, it's, it's rather like horizontal a bit. Whereas Hibana has a very high fire rate, so it's rather hard to control. Vertical grip is a good option to make it more controllable, more easy for you to take longer engagements and make use of that ACOG scope, for example. However, let's say you face no troubles with grips because you play a high sensitivity or because you're an experienced veteran player, you're Bolo, you're Spoit, you're Psycho. Personally, my recommendation, use angle grip. This is because angle grip gives you the advantage of having a faster scope in time, which means your first bullet accuracy is actually better. Because as you're using a vertical grip, let's say you left click before your right click, which means you shoot before you scope in, your bullets are not guaranteed to hit exactly in the middle of your screen. Whereas if an angle grip, the time it takes for you to scope in is quicker, thus your your bullet as your first bullet will be more accurate because you'll already be scoped in by your first bullet. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So especially for aggressive players, I would say use angle grip 
because that means you can take uh, very fast engagements. You, you can actually sprint around, quickly peek a corner, rather than someone playing vertical grip where you have to scope in before you peek the corner, if not already be scoped in before you peek. So it also promotes a faster, faster style of play. And yeah, so it gives you an extra benefit. So it's something like a compensator extended barrel in um, the, the terms of uh, barrel attachments where it's more of you can already control the gun very well. So you might as well gain that benefit from the other attachments. Do you recommend using laser? Ta-da! Now we'll be talking about lasers. Alright. If I missed out anything, please tag me. Um, if you don't know what's my tag, I will be typing tag me so let's say you have any important questions just tag playbox arena and i'll be able to see it easier like that oh i missed out muzzle i did oh did i oh i did muzzle break personally muzzle break pistol muzzle break dmr muzzle break uh me muzzle break on bb's uh blackbeard's mk17 which is the auto rifle good Muzzle break on everything else, not so good. <laughs> uh, this is as muzzle break reduces your first, your basically your tapping, right? It lowers the recoil on your tapping, so you don't really gain much benefit if you're using an SMG or an assault rifle because in this game, recoil is rather controllable across eighty percent of the guns. So personally, I would not recommend you to be a tap player. You can't be like scream from CS:GO. It doesn't really work that way. So I don't recommend using muzzle break unless you're using a single fire gun, which is a DMR, a pistol. Thanks for notifying me, Fox. I forgot about that. Uh, Fox, I will host the game now, I think. Yes, I think I'll do it now. Uh, I'll invite you. I'll invite you first. As I said, part one has a bit more theory, so just uh, bear with me a bit. Uh, however, the... Let's see. However, the part two is a bit more less theory, so maybe we'll adjust how many rounds you'll be playing. Uh, based on that. I put muzzle brake on most guns. Uh, personally, I don't recommend you to do that because um, it doesn't really lower your recoil. It just lowers that first bullet. So example, guns with very high f kick in the gun, which means like, let's say kick basically means, example, the first bullet to the second bullet, the gap, right? If the gap is very large, that means it's a very high kick. So muzzle brake is good at lowering this distance, which means Instead of having to pull down a lot and then slowly, gradually pull down, you would now have a very steady, like, straight line pull down with a muzzle brake. Other than that, I don't really recommend using it. Alright. Wait. Why am I slight? Oh, here. Eh. But yeah, thanks for reminding me about that. Laser sight. Operation. Alright, so laser sight. Should you use it? Me? I don't use it on any gun at all, not even shotguns. <laughs> I don't use it at all. Uh, this is because I, I don't find that lasers give you... Lasers are... I don't feel that the benefit of a laser, which means reducing that uh, hip fire spread, is worth exposing your location. So let's say you have a laser sight and you're peeking a guy, right? Your laser actually gives away your position. If not, it actually tells the defender or the attacker that where you are looking at. So let's say you're an attacker pushing through a doorway. There's a left and a right. Your laser is facing the right side. That means the player on the left will know that you're not looking at him. So if you think about it that way, it makes it a lot easier for the enemy to win that gunfight. So personally, I don't use it. On Buck, I understand why you want to use it. However, I which means reducing the spread of the shotgun skeleton key. However, I don't recommend using it. Because... After you open these vertical holes as a buck player, you'll be playing on these vertical holes, which means let's say you're on the second floor fighting people on the first floor. Now, as you have already opened the floor and you're looking downwards at the enemy, the enemy will see your laser, which tells them where you are looking at. So I don't recommend it at all. The whole point of playing vertical is to is the element of surprise, right? And also like forcing players out of their position. So I would say having a laser reduces the element of surprise and number two that laser tells the enemy where you're looking at which means players enemies which are in other spaces 
will know that it's safe for them to play, even though there's a hole above them, their head, you know? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I invited, I uh, emptied out a slot? Oh, who is it for me to invite? Uh, if, if possible, can someone else invite? If not, just add me. I'll do it. But yeah, I hope that answers your question quite about um Buck Skeleton Key. Personally, I don't recommend it at all. We'll finally be playing! Wait, so the workshop is basically on Twitch? No, we'll be actually playing right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll be playing right now. Who is it that I have to invite? So basically how this goes is, um, as you guys will be playing, I will be spectating, right? And then I'll be talking about it. So maybe after the game, if you have any questions or within the game, you have any questions, you can either ask our admins. If not, you can personally, uh, oh no, if not, you can ask in the workshop chat, if not the questions chat, or if you're very shy, you can personally DM me on Discord and I'll answer your question. Be it on stream, off stream. So if you have questions after the stream, you can message me as well. Um, but basically how this works is as you guys are playing, I'll be talking to the Twitch chat and after the game is over, you can either watch the VOD back. If not, you can ask me again and I'll reply. Okay. Um, who am I to invite Fox? Actually, <laughs> am I supposed to invite you? <laughs> I am. <laughs> All right, relax, Quack. Relax. Uh, Quack, are you playing? If not, Quicks, are you playing? Because I don't think I know who exactly is the last guy who's supposed to attend. I think today we'll be playing Clubhouse, a very balanced map. So, uh, do I have Clubhouse? Oh, I do. I'm in the lobby. Oh, but um, who's the last one? I think you'll be playing 3 3, right? Give me a second. I, th I don't think. Invite Javier? Alright. Javier. What's his name again? Ephemeral. Alright. Got him. Uh, oh, I can't change the settings right now. So I think we'll be playing about 6 rounds, maybe. 3 3, maybe. We'll play 3 3, and then uh, we'll move on to part 2. I'll have to be a bit fast. Other than that, it's, uh, it's okay. Check the Discord workshop chat. All right. Workshop, Discord workshop. Where we think I'm supposed to create a custom. Blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, I'm on this Zoom playbox. Those not in a custom. You invite them to fill up the space. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, friends, add Mondis. Wait, so is Mondis playing? I'm going by order. Mondis Ventus. Mondus Ventus Um Well then it's not loading. I'll go to the next guy. <laughs> Zoom underscore dot dash. Um you play's a bit slow. So um it's a bit awkward. It's a bit awkward. Um Oh Mondus is already here? Huh? No, you're not, liar. Wait, who is my supposed to invite? Fox, you're not answering me, man. Oh, someone's in. Who's in? Someone joined. Alright. It's too late. Someone joined. We're gonna start. I don't really have much time today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Everyone space bar jumble. Everyone space space space. Okay, we'll be starting now. Alright, so yeah, as I said, today we um I mean for this for this part we'll be focusing more on the defending side. So uh defenders keep in mind of things like the impact grenades and all this kind of thing barbed wires. What gadgets should you be bringing? Stuff like that.
Is there a way for me to see gadgets? Not yet, in spectator, I think. Oh, coffee! Alright, so um, if y'all are new, because I think there's a few new people here through the Scape Instagram ad that my boy's name was on. Uh, yeah, but if you're new here, basically now we'll be. I'm not casting. I'll be talking more about how they're using the utility and how they can uh, better improve their usage of it. So, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's hope um, this load doesn't take too long. All right. It's been a while since I've Defenders spectated. Protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. All right, so let's talk about their utility. So look on the right side of your screen, the far right on your screen. Capcom has Nitro Cell, very good for killing players. I'll plant this if someone's planting behind a door. Chuck a C4, boom, bam, easy. Or if the floor is destructible, Nitro Cell is a very good way of being safe while being able to kill players above you. Yes. Located by attackers. What did Frost bring? So, Frost is bringing shields. So, as I said, deployable shields very good for holding these long angles or creating cover in very open spaces. So, that usage of the shield is by theory correct. Of course, there is a better way for her to put it. She can put it by this door in the middle of my screen where the echo was or, you know, stuff like that. Or on this catwalk where we see Bandit playing. So those are just some good spots for deployable shields. Um, barbed wires, right? So we see Cornbread bringing barbed wires. Barbed wires very effective on hallways, very effective on staircases. Something that you should always try and bring. So, as I said earlier as well, you should always try to have at least two sets of barbed wires. If not, have a lesion or an ally and then at least one set of barbed wires. This is because there's usually a lot of uh, different hallways and angles where it's very hard for you to keep track of. So having that barbed wire gives you that advantage, right? Oh my goodness, goodbye. <laughs> Alright. We see the Echo bringing impact grenades. Impact grenades very good at opening rotations. Especially in a situation like this, where they don't have shotgun operators like smoke, mute. Um, impact grenades very good way of opening up rotations. So this is something very good from Quex N. But uh, as I said, it's it'll be much better if there are at least one more set of barbed wires. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, the plant's actually going down now. Um, this is when nitro cells will be very useful. If not, as he's playing Echo, we covered before like how to properly use your operator. Echo is one of these operators where your yokai is very good at giving you information and intel and is probably the best operator at denying a plant because you have 4 charges on your yokai's total between your 2 yokai's so yeah, it's just a very good way Hey, hi Poppy! Hi hi The bar placements y'all got teach? Uh, no we didn't teach but um Generally speaking also, um, especially for people who put barbs on staircases, which is good thing, do it. Please continue to do that. Don't put it too high, right? Um, let's say there's a 90 degree angle in that um, staircase, right? Like an upper and a lower. So let's say like consulate has yellow stairs. You don't want to put it yeah, right on the top of the staircase, but instead either on the can. slant, if not on the lower portion. Because only if it's on the lower portion, if you hear them breaking the bob, you can take action and peek it. Or if you put it on the staircase itself, that is when the attacker would have to peek, right? So the attacker can't peek on like a straight line. Usually they have to stand on that slanted staircase. So putting it on that slant, you know, is right before the where the enemy peeks. So this means you can also take action immediately and go for the kill. Whereas if you put it too high, let's say in my middle of the screen right now, if you put it right there instead of on this lower portion where the drone just came up, it doesn't really deny the enemy because the attackers will still be able to walk up the staircase easily and by the time that they see you, they would not even have touched the barb yet. So that's just um, bad use of how to use a barb. So 
So right now, this is good from Rin. Rin is playing uh, Legion. So what Legion's um, primary gadget is? Oh no! <laughs> what Legion's primary gadget is? It's like a invisible barbed wire thing, right? So that would mean that they do not have to bring two barbed wire sets, but instead having one barbed wire set is enough, as Legion has more than I think Legion has five, right? Or six or eight goo mines. So. It balances out in the end. But yeah, as I said, in general, you want to have added two set of barbs, if not one set of barb, and a lesion or an ally or like deployable shields to watch hallways instead of a barb wire in the hallway kind of thing. My throat's a bit dry today. So actually, I know we're talking about the defenders, but I want to know that the attackers right now are using their utility Incredibly well. Like, <laughs> I think this is the best I've seen from the workshops. The past uh, three workshops. Yes. Um, this is very good use. They use the EMP. The Thatcher is paired up with the Heart Breacher. Um, they open up walls. When they want to execute for the bomb side, they're making use of their smoke grenades. I think this is very good from the attacking side and I think uh, especially for those who have came the past few lessons I'm glad to see improvement and for those who are new here good use of utility keep it up and um, focus on the things that you're weaker at yeah uh, do you like the new 1.5 no I actually personally I really hate it <laughs> uh, I just use it as practice but other than that I personally I'm not a huge fan of the introduction of 1.5 I feel that uh, there was no real need to bring any new optics to the game. That's yeah, my opinion. So right now, this is not so good from the defending side, right? Where they bring one proximity alarm, which as I say, kind of works as a barbed wire set. So let's just say that's one set. However, oh wait, no, they have a lesion. Oh no, that's fine. Sorry, I take it back. They know what they're doing. I don't. So, um, one thing to note, especially if you're playing bomb sites on basements like this, right, where let's say this is the basement and then this, uh, how do I go up? Never mind. But let's say this is the basement. Uh, usually the ceiling above you, most of it will be destructible. So having the use of nitro cells, especially like example, right now I'm spectating Pulse, he has nitro cells. Uh, Capcom has nitro cells. It's one of the best ways to clear players above you because rather than having to peek the ang- like, especially if there's a buck, let's say there's an enemy buck opening a lot of angles, you don't know which hole he's peeking from. So rather than exposing yourself and taking a gamble, a nitro cell is a good way to have a safe way of being able to clear a player above you. Also a good way to deny plant. So let's say you're playing first floor, bomb site second floor, good way to deny plant above you. Stuff like that. Ooh, just you cornbread. So um, this is a very uh, unusual use of the pulse scanner where usually you would want to have your pulse below rather than above the enemy. So uh, that's just something to note for a quick TN. Oops. As I said, usually you want to be below as a pulse because if you're scanning above, you're usually going to be caught out by the attacker. So that's just uh, something to keep in mind. Is it better to have the rotation lower or in the middle? Um, I'd say it kind of depends, right? Like, uh, if you're planning to have the rotation work as a line of sight to kill players, I would say having it in a middle height is better. Or like a vault hole, right? Because you want to peek it. But if you're planning to play a lot, like let's say you're not planning to peek it, but you're just gonna prone and just look at feet, have it low. Or if you don't really plan to use that rotate, if you just plan to use it as a rotation and not a line of sight, have it crouch. I mean, have it prone, right? So if play, if enemy players are sprinting, they can't see you as you're also running away, kind of thing. But in general, I have it. On crouch in general. Jack, drop the bomb. 
But yeah, if you want to have that extra line of sight, because as example, let's say there's boxes, right, which cover the feet of a player. Uh, example, um, a good example would be cafe. You know where the uh, top white is, right, near cocktail door. I personally call it white stacks. The rotation into freezer. You would have it vault hole. Reason being, having it vault hole gives you the chance um, to look through that long desk. Because that long desk, having the table there blocks the lower half of the enemy. So if you have it crouched, you can't actually see the enemy. And one more thing to note is uh, having it crouched, right? Let's say you do it crouched. Let's say freezer wall is now open to its piano. If there's an attacker on piano, they can actually see your feet because they're further away. So if they see your feet, they'll kill you. While you can't actually see them because in your screen, all you can see is the floor. On their screen, they see the floor, the except they see your feet, if that makes sense. So, it's something like that. It's like, if you can be seen anyways, you might as well have it high, you know? Hey, that's another thing from Ted, if you have it vault, it prevents like, all up balls out rushes as well, so uh, something to that. But yeah, uh, that's a very good question on that rotation. Not a lot of people really think about that. But yeah, hope I answered that. So right now we see three C force, two bar uh two shields, no bar boys. This is something I don't recommend. Always have bar boys. Always have some form of way to identify where the enemies are pushing from, as in the attackers. So. Uh, shields are very good, however, the issue with shields compared to barb is shields will require you to actually be there to use it, whereas barb wise is something you just put down and then it does its job basically. So, just us something to note. Or a beep beep, yep. Please don't see for this. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, this is very good use of a pulse scanner where you can to gain a lot of information. So let's say right now Alice, right? Simply by scanning this, she's able to identify there's three people pushing from the west side or jacuzzi, right? This means that most likely the east side is very weak. Oh no! Don't do that. The attacker's bomb diffuser has been dropped. Oh, combat's insane! But yeah, um Generally, let's say if you know there's um a lot of audio on the east side. It just means the west side is very weak. So if you have if you're playing a roam position, you can contest that west side very easily because there's at most gonna be one or two people. So that's just something to note. Oh, oh goodbye. And low is my Welcome idol. Back. Damn, you got your bar set low, dude. Send him a dog mode. <laughs> I'll buy the treats. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> no, quack. So right now, as you can see, um, good try at playing a shotgun trying to hold that construction door at a close range. However, being exposed to that window, I would personally recommend if you were to play it like that, you should still use the SMG-11. This is because I would say SMG-11, though it's an SMG and not a shotgun, it's probably one of the best guns to use close range. Um, considering how fast the fire rate is, and the DPS is, which means the time to kill a player is actually much lower than most guns. It's still probably one of the best guns to hold close range. Like, I would still use an SMG-11 close range over a shotgun sometimes. So, something like that. But that's just why I also said SMG-11 is a weapon where it takes some time to get used to, especially if it's very high recoil and fire rate. But if you master it, you're set. You would win a lot of fights. So yeah, there's something to know. Oops, did I R6? That's it. Oh my bad. I didn't mean to do that. Defenders disable the diffuser. Defenders win. So I think now we'd be switching teams, where the attackers are swapping over now. So uh, let's see if we can identify anything unique, or special. Doing R6 stats, nah, bro. I'm not gonna do them like that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I thought we'd be 
a bit behind in time. We're still alright. We're still alright. We're still vibing. We're still alright. Ah, Malusi. Um, I know some of you probably will be asking, is Malusi good? Um, very. Uh, if that answers your question. Um, a Malusi gadget has no downsides for its use. So, use it. Um, especially now. Oops, I spelled it wrong. But yeah, so. What, um, to note is. Oops, a bit laggy. Malusi gadget has no downside. Use it over barb, use it over proximity alarms, use it over deployable shields, use it over. Everything that exists in this game right now. Um. Malusi gadgets are hard to destroy. They are have a very large area of effect, so it's very useful in even big rooms or hallways, long ass hallways, tight angles. Uh, you have three of them, which is ah. Ten seconds left before. Ah, you have three of them. <laughs> Sorry, my inner, my inner competitive players. Uh, so, uh, why? Um, but yeah, Malusi, no downsides, use it all the time if it's up. Basically, you want free games, use it. There's no downsides. There's no downsides. Just use it. <laughs> Sound indication slows, huge area of effect. You have three, which means you have more on a single operator than someone who can bring barbed wires and proximity anyway. So you can cover two operators with. And. You still have access to your secondary gadgets like impact grenades for rotations, if not nitro cells to deny plants. So you basically have everything in the universe and a good set of guns. You want free games? Use Malusi. That that that's my answer, dude. That's my answer. I <laughs> so right now, I think um after looking at a bit, right? I think this blue team, right? They're very good at their utility. As you can see, their usage is a lot better than what we saw previously. Where, um, right now you can see bulletproof camera on the wacky for that intel. Smoke with the shields to be able to hold, um, ang like cover. You see, this is basically free cover. I'm pretty sure this Shigeru Kami guy is not a new player, but hey, it's nice to see him. But it creates, it makes it so that, um, you c are, you're somehow able from a very open space, somehow now have this shield that's so hard to destroy, especially if things like ADSs were my magnets, so that's an incredible use of the deployable shield. Then we have two nitro cells on these two operators, Bandit and uh, Valkyrie to deny plant. Very good use, especially now, as I said, playing vertical, we covered this in the, I don't know if it was the last one, if not the two workshops ago. Playing vertical is what really makes uh, Rainbow Six stand out from other FPS titles. So, very good use, except this time they decide not to use it for vertical, but instead go for a peak, which I don't agree with, however the uh, idea was there. Quack, as in I am quack, now just dying. Bob wire, very nice, but personally, on the smoke, I wouldn't bring a, a shield on smoke, instead I'll probably want him to bring barbed wire, as I said, you would, oh, you saw his head. But as I said, you would want to try to have at least two sets of barbed wire. If not, you know, a proximity and a barb. If not, a lesion and a barb. Something like that. Attackers are activating the That's usually how you do it, so. So right now, in this situation, it's very, very hard to win. But, um, oh, this is a nice use of uh, intel. As you can see, you heard that red ping going down, that means they most likely had a Valkyrie cam, if not a bulletproof camera, and you know, that does mean it's very good use of it. Um, as we talked about before, I think in the first workshop as well, it's a team game, right? It's a team game, rely on your teammates, at the same time have trust for your teammates. Of course, it's a bit hard if you're solo queuing, but in general, uh, you should kind of trust, trust your teammates. And also, if you're dead, uh, don't AFK, don't leave your room and go grab water, go to the washroom. Unless you're very, very urgent, don't pee yourself. But if you're dead, be useful to your team, you know? Get on cams. Um, maybe we see two of your teammates holding the exact same door. Maybe tell them, hey, you two are watching the same door. Player one, maybe you can look at the other hallway. Something like that. So yeah, there's something to know. Because as a spectator, or like um, a dead player where you get to see that overview, 
you have that advantage of being able to really understand what exactly is happening uh, around your team. Nice hair. Honestly, my hair is crazy, crazy. It's very crazy, my Defenders, protect your bombs My hair has been very flat backers. recently. I, I have very bushy hair. I probably should go for a haircut. If it's too bushy, it doesn't puff, you know? It kind of just like... Eh. But yeah, thank you! You must be a very handsome man. You must be a beautiful human. Mr. Izio. You're probably like David Beckham. I rate that. Alright. This! I like this! Watch how they balance out their utility. They have nitro cells to kill vertical players. They have two set of barbed wires because there's a lot of long hallways, especially on this bomb site where there is, uh, example like uh, moto or biker. There's two doors. There's a hatch. You can put a bob underneath a hatch and the door. So that would require two bobs. There's a main stairs which will require a barbed wire. There's a dirt tunnel which requires a barbed wire. There's two hallways in blue that require barbed wire. So, in situations like this, I like that they're playing a lesion and two sets of barbed wires because they would really require a lot of these utility to identify where the enemy is pushing from uh, if not at least gain some information or slow down the attackers push so I, I think this is very good and they already know that they've covered all these necessities like barbed wires come on Kai you can just scope in but it's okay <laughs> so they've known they covered all this utility and then you see Shirikami bringing um, deployable shield this very good Shirakami, there's no way this guy is a new player. Using bar, uh, using shields on long hallways. No, he should not be on camera. He's the last player that should be on the camera right now. Uh, that's good. Very aware. But shields so good at holding these long angles, right? Right now, I'm pretty sure if I was an attacker in this situation, if I didn't have the necessary utility like being able to clear ADSS with maybe flashbangs or EMP. If I didn't have a grenade to clear the shield or a Zofia charge, Ash charge to clear the shield, I would not be pushing in like this. That's why. The opposite caster curse. But yeah, that's why. Don't do that. Uh, always clear shields, especially if it's a very important... As a defender, put shields in very important hallways. As an attacker, clear shields in very important hallways. So, very good, very good. Why are these guys here? They're using utility well. Oh man, humid weather makes my hair sticky. But yeah, as I said, utility usage is very, very important. It's Rainbow Six. It's not Counter Strike. It's not Black Shot. Singapore Black Shot. So, make use of your utility. Rainbow Six is, is a lot like a MOBA in FPS. So, think about it that way, yeah. It's like Overwatch minus the flying, but more on the aiming as well. That's the balance. So yeah, very good! I like it. Good use of shields, good use of bobs, good use of uh, how many bobs you need, lesion traps as well. Uh, I think there's two more rounds to this. Let's see the tab. Who's popping off? Who's Bolo? Beverages is Bolo. She's Bolo. She's the next Luna. These people kind of insane. Yeah, dude. I, I feel like... Why are they here? They should take my job. I should be the one signing up. Yes, Playbox. Beverages is Bolo. And hey, this guy's stream sniping. They're still better than my rank players? Oh damn. <laughs> but yeah. I, 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 I'm glad to see that, especially for players like maybe Beverages or um and something like Ephemeral because I know him or Quack who's a caster. Uh Shirakami, I, I see him use utility well, so it's either he knows how to play the game to a decent level, if not he watches Pro League, which is very good. I I I'm very um pleased to know that uh, players who are uh, like already considerably good enough are humbling themselves to learn more about the game and I think that's very important especially in Rainbow Six where even for me I've been playing this game for four years I even played in the beta a bit and I'm still learning new things I'm still contacting pro players and and talking and discussing with them on, on certain things so I think it's something very good 
Uh, something for the wacky to note, or this mute jammer, right? Try not to have it positioned like this. In the middle of the screen, you see it's slanted. This is because it's a lot easier for the attackers to then destroy it. Because there's more surface area. Or if you're putting a jammer right now in the middle of the screen, you should put it more towards the east wall, which is the right side wall. This is because it's a lot harder to shoot from this window on the south side. Something to know. So now, after all the praise that I've given them, this is very bad utility. <laughs> they have 4 nitro cells and 1 bulletproof camera, no barbed wires, no shields. Uh, not a fan. Um, we've covered before that bulletproof cameras are only very useful if you don't have utility operators like uh, Valkyrie or Maestro, Echo, uh, Mozzie. Because the issue with that is if you are right now, they already have a Valkyrie player on beverages, right? So that means they already have three cameras. So there should be enough information. So there would be no need to use a bulletproof camera. Especially because the enemy team is not bringing an IQ which can scan for these gadgets. Uh, Valkyrie is going to be, most likely the camps will never be shot. So that's just something to note. However, one thing I want to note is, um, they are playing a lot of vertical, these two players, on Mozzie and beverages. Very good use of nitro cells. They're playing vertical angles where they're playing from below bomb using the nitro cells attacker. above. Of course, right now, the they should have been in lounge. Lounge is here in the middle of my screen. Where, let's say, if they were to be playing inside of lounge, they could actually attacker. use the nitro cells to deny the plant from below without having to risk their life. Especially if they're already positioned there. Nitro cells, very good. Alright, so that's just something to note. By defenders. Always win. use it vertically if you can. If not, use it to kill Monty, shield operators, stuff like that. So um, I would say that was... Um, I wouldn't say it's a good that they used for Nitro Cells. But um, especially for... I think it was beverages right on the Valkyrie. The use of the Nitro Cell was good. Instead of having to risk your life and peek the player, you just throw a C4 and job done, you cleared the guy, you know, you did your job, right? Even though you can't deny a plant, as much as I always say you should use Nitro Cells to deny a plant, if you kill a player, right, even if you don't know which operator it is, it's still an advantage for your team. So now it's a 5v4 and a 5v4 is definitely a huge deal. So it's so much easier to win a 5v4 than a 5v5, duh. So yeah, that's something to note. Of course, if you can specifically target operators like Capital, right? With his very strong utility or Thermite Heart Breacher or an EMP on Thatcher. If you can kill these operators, which are priority targets as a defender. Huge. Attack you basically you win your whole team the round just using your Nitro Cell. So that's something to note. Uh, This will be the last round. Is team back teams. All right. So now we're looking at All right, so now we're looking at two nitro cells, a barbed wire, lesion, and bulletproof. Ten seconds to go. Very good. This is still balanced. Though we don't see the two sets Five of barbed wires, right? We now see a bulletproof camera instead. A bulletproof camera still gives you information, something like a... As, as much as it's kind of like a barbed wire, except like a shield where you would require you to actually use it to be able to make use of it, it's still going to carry out a similar purpose. So... Good. Yes, I, I, I am keeping track of time. This is currently the last round, don't worry. Part 2 has lesser theory, so it should be alright. But thanks for reminding me. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Is on. on ping is actually a good call out. Uh, right now with the use of uh, ping 2.0 where there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I recommend you call your number. So don't just say on ping, on ping, on yellow, uh, on red. Try to say like um, on number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5. It's, it's a lot better. Why moto hatch open? I think they're trying to go for an SSG style roam. Um, how do I go up again? I forgot. Quick, do you know how to go up again? I don't even <laughs> okay. Okay, so Moto Hatch. Oh, this is an SSG room. So basically, 
The idea of this Rome setup is to contest the first floor, which is what you can see Castle doing now. So having these hatches open, I'm pretty sure the hatch above him is also open, right? So having the hatches open, having the hatches open uh, enables it so that even the second floor hatches open, right? So if there's a Roma on second floor, it's easy for them to rotate down to first floor. Having the first floor hatch open means you can rotate down to the basement floor. So usually if you hold like this, you would have like four Romas, if not five Romas, where you are, instead of contesting within the bomb site, you're contesting away from the bomb site. So it's a lot of gunfights. So that's how they hold it. Using the castle, blocking off barricades makes it so that there's a lot of extra cover for these Romas to rotate down safely rather than they drop down the hatch and immediately die. So that's why they opened up motor hatch. They probably opened up gym hatch. I think they probably opened up stage hatch as well, which is on bar. Something to note. For this kind of strategy, usually you only close stock hatch and church hatch. A hey, church hatch, armory hatch, sorry. So yeah, that's us. Yeah. You can probably go on YouTube. You can type uh, SSG Clubhouse Rome. SSG Clubhouse Defense. There should be a few videos on this kind of setup. It's, it's actually a, probably one of the most more effective ways. Be beverages is insane! She's what the frick? Hey yo, uh, Quicks, you here? Can you um contact her? I think we found our f a new player for our team. I think she could probably be our next IGL mate. I'm not needed. I'll just be a coach. Oh, it's Kirsten. Hi, Kirsten. Why am I a kiddo? Because you're young. Duh. Yeah, this is the restaurant. Thanks, thanks for everyone. All right, we'll be back soon. Now we'll be going back to the slides. Yeah, this beverage is insane. And look, no cap, no cap, no cap. Why, why her aim? Beverages has better aim than like shout and nos. <laughs> okay, after I'm gonna take it back. Hey, yo, beverages, why are you here? You should be playing pro league. Why are you here? <laughs> I finished my coffee. Anyone want to sponsor me? Nest Cafe, I'm looking at you. If not, uh, Star eh, not Starbucks. Coffee bean or something. as a percentage or something. But alright. Keeping track on time. Let's keep track on time, everybody. We got to move on part two really quick because, we, as I said, there's another escape event coming on uh, at about 2 p.m. or something like that. So, yeah. Part two. Sledge. I'll be covering two operators only, by the way. So, uh, part two, Sledge, as I said, auto rifles are always more consistent than shotguns, DMRs. So, you should always pick an auto rifle if it's available. Except for things like smoke mute, as I said. Shotgun, especially on Sledge, mainly on Sledge, you don't need that shotgun because your Sledgehammer, which is your primary gadget, is already used to open up walls anyway. So, you don't really require that shotgun. SMG 11, use it over the pistol because, as I said, here's an optic scope so you can actually fight the contest the longer range angles, better stats, it's good at fighting close range angles, so let's say as the L85 does not have angled grip as we covered before what the grips do, SMG11, you just switch out to your secondary, fight someone in that close range angle, switch back to your L85, boom, job done, easy, you're gonna get that 5kd, that diamond rank, that W. What barrel is better than SMG11? Uh, I use Flash Hider. I think um, at least 70% of players probably use Flash Hider. I see some people use Long Barrel, Compensators, but um, I recommend Flash Hider. SMG Black Eyes? Yeah, I have the Black Eyes. Uh -huh. Yes, Gateway will be coming right up at 2. That's why. That's why I have to quicken up. I have to speed run this. War record. Flag. Frag. Frag. Frag, frag grenade. Flashbang. Um, especially for Sledge, Sledge is usually known for frag grenades, so bring frag grenades. Uh, right now, where the meta is, frag grenades are very useful because there's a lot of defender utility such as shields, uh, banshees on Malusi, uh, bulletproof cameras, maestro cameras, a lot of in like very hard to like bulletproof gadgets, which require you, require you to use explosives. So. And not many attacking operators have access to frag grenades, so you should bring frag grenades almost 99% of the time, especially on Sledge. Uh, if not, just bring it on your operator, whatever you may be using. Flashbangs, probably the one of the best ways to clear ADS. Usually nowadays, you don't really see people use flashbangs to get kills, as in throw a flashbang and peek a player. Nowadays, you usually use flashbangs to clear ADSs, which is Jaeger's gadget. If not, clear Wamai magnets, because 
you need to usually clear these these in order to be able to destroy shields because usually they'll be in ADS position to you know make it a bit harder for the attackers. Something to note. Smoke grenades and breaching charges. Smoke grenades are probably one of the least well utilized uh uh I would say gadgets in the game because it's a bit hard to position it well and not many people are used to the throwing mechanic of this game. But definitely if you can use it well it's very good especially for executing plants where let's say you want to go for a diffuser plant, right? You can smoke off doorways, smoke off sorry. Smoke off doorways, smoke off hallways, um to make it a lot easier to get the plant down as the defenders won't have a clear vision of where they uh where you are exactly planting. So yeah, that's something to note. Um something I've learned is you should try to have at least one set of smokes in your team. But if you find no trouble with executing or getting the bomb down, then maybe you don't need a smoke. Vice versa, if you find it very hard to get a plant down, a smoke grenade can be very useful. Breaching charges are to make it so that your roster is a bit more versatile. We've covered operator lineups in the last week's lesson where you want to have a balance between vertical, utility, entry frag, all these kind of things. So let's say you want to bring an IQ and you don't really have much and you can't really change any other operator. So now you don't have a vertical operator like Buck or Sledge. You can bring that breaching charge on that IQ and, and cover a similar role as well. Optics on attackers. Oh my goodness, there's a lot to cover. I don't think I'll just be covering this very briefly. Okay. Um, so you can look at my notes. Uh, I've written them down as you can see in the point form. If you have any questions, as I said, feel free to reach out to me personally, be it either to my Twitter, my Instagram, if not Discord, I have my socials later on again, so you can keep track of that. Um, or yeah, so basically I'll just be going through very fast. Sites are personal preference. Um, however, I would always suggest you to use sites that are available across all weapons, which means not even iron sight. So I, what I mean is the original holographic sight, which is used on at least 99% of the guns. Uh, reflex sight, which is available on 99% of the guns. Um, these weapons promote um, consistency. So as I covered before, especially if your aim is a bit wonky or a bit shaky, uh, I recommend you not to be changing your sights too often or your optics because uh, it may affect your aim, even if it's a bit of a small detail, missing that maybe four or five pixels will still lead you to dying because you couldn't hit that headshot. So personally, I recommend using a common sight across all the boards. If you like the 1.5, the new scope, use it if you want. But uh, personally, I would still say use a reflex sight or the original holographic scope because it's available across all the weapons. I'll answer a question. Um, 3X on the DMR is broken. I personally don't like it. Some iron sights are useful. Uh, um, I'll cover it again where I'll say that iron sights, they are good iron sights. Hibana has a good iron sight. Zofia has a good iron sight. Those are attacking uh, examples. Defending examples. SMG-12 has a good iron sight. Mira's auto rifle has a... SMG has a good... Uh, Vector has a good iron sight. Um, T5 SMG is pretty decent. Um, a lot of these guns, they have good iron sights. However... Um, the issue with iron sights is that across all guns, they have different iron sights. Let's say the R4C from Ash compared to the G36 on Ash. It's completely different. The L85 on Sledge compared to an, on an AR33 of Thatcher. Very different. So I would always recommend players not to use the iron sight. Also because the issue with iron sights is not that it's not clear in the middle or where the indication of the tip is. The issue between iron sights is that you don't know the bottom half. So let's say you're holding an, uh, at an angle on a door, right? And you're looking at head level. That gun barrel itself will be blocking... The gun body will be actually blocking the body of the enemy if the enemy is crouched. You won't actually see the player. So that's the issue. So using iron sights, you don't have the access to that bottom half of that screen. Whereas if you use a hollow sight, due to it being very clear, there's only an indicator and optic in the middle while there's a gap at the bottom, left, right, up, down... You can hold these tight angles much, much better because you will know that they're crouched. You will know when they're standing, stuff like that. That's why I always suggest you use an optic. Fun fact. I don't know if y'all thought about that. <laughs> 
but yeah, as I said, with the release of Zero, which is like the newest attacking operator, right? There's a lot of new optics that were released, but yeah, as I said, try to use the most common ones. That's that's my personal recommendations. If you don't find yourself very affected by it, then it's fine. Huge mega important. We all love this slide. Being a team game, think about the bigger picture. What your team needs. It's not usually when you play a game. It's not about what you want, right? So. What I mean by this is, let's say your strategy requires you to play a castle. Not a lot of people like playing castle. Most people don't like the gun, like the UMP. However, if your team needs it, maybe it is the best thing to do. Like, um, Maybe you having that extra gadget on castle, you sacrificing yourself not getting the kills, but now your teammate is able to rotate around the map freely, get kills around, win you the rounds. I think that's very worth. Um, so that's about the gadgets. Attachments are different. Attachments are personal preference. So like optics, gun barrel, grips, all these are personal preference. So use what works for you. Like example, I think it was Alice, Arin. I can't remember, sorry. One of you said you use muzzle brake. If it works for you, stick with it. I would say I would still recommend you to try using like flash high to compensate. I would rec recommend you try at least. But if you find yourself only, like still really feeling that muzzle breaks for you, stick with it. Don't change. It's all about the consistency. So use what works for you. And that's, I think, the most important. As long as you bring yourself, you play your best game, right? Don't listen to what other people say. I'm a bit of a hypocrite. Sometimes I'm like, Shaiko is so good, I'm going to copy Shaiko. Sometimes Spoit is so good, I'm going to copy Spoit. But in general, try not to switch too much. You are you, right? So yeah, that's my last thing to say bit before now we go to the next match yes fox right now next match i know y'all gotta chill man i'm a pro bro i keep in mind of the time bro y'all are too scared dude i know what i'm doing come on y'all doubting me invite you and mondus all right I don't have Mondus. What rank am I? Currently, I'm plat 2 on my main. I'm plat 1 on my smurf. I don't really play much rank. I'm not a fan of rank. Um, I also play a lot of scrims, which means custom games over ranked. So. Fox, I've invited you. But yeah, thanks for the invite. But uh, in general, I'm diamond. I've never not hit diamond every season, so yeah. Let's try a new map. What map do you want to play? Let's play a smaller map, right? I think um, I think due to time constraints, I will pick consulate. Consulate does it teach utility? I think it does. So. Oh, beverages. I guess you're not playing a second game. Yeah, you're you're actually doing really well. Your team was doing well in terms of utility. Like, uh, the balance of utility was very good every round. Besides that one time on CCTV where you guys played four C fours and one BC on on uh, Jaeger. Other than that, I think especially for your team, the utility balance like between barbed wires, impacts, uh, you info like Valkyrie, I think it was good. Shields, everything like this. I think it was very good. Alright. Uh, I'll start in about 4 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright. So, this time, we'll be talking more of the attacking side. So I'll be spectating the attacking side. We'll play six rounds.
What did I make? What was sign I make? Cause I like, I can't remember anymore. I thought Beverage got a girl. Is Beverage here? Oh, she is. She bought a clap booty. She bought a clap everyone then. She's insane. But yeah, uh, attacking. Once, as you can see, okay. Most likely claymore. Most likely grenades. Most likely flashbangs. Most likely flashbangs. And lastly, most likely claymore. It's alright. Um. Attackers need to locate and Am I right? Oh, uh, no. Breaching charge. Hot breach gadget. But one thing I want to note is I don't like that they don't bring a Thermite, an Ace, or a Hibana, or even a Maverick. And I also don't like that they don't bring an Ash, if not at least a Zofia. Because, okay, so I'll start with the Ash and Zofia. Without having Ash and Zofia, they are unable to now clear shields, unable to clear soft walls, barbed wires from a distance. Uh, given the enemy team's not doing, not using it, but in most cases, it's usually used like shields and everything, so... I personally suggest not to play these kinds of operators, but instead bring an Ash or Zofia. And also for um, secondary gadget wise, I would say it's okay. However, as I said, not having that soft breach really would suck. And now moving on to hard breach, we covered this before of roles where not having a Thermite or a Hibana or a Maverick is very bad. I would say 99% of the times you would actually require a hard breach player to at least win the round. Only maps like Coastline, you would then really require a Heart Breacher. So in every other map, every other bomb site, always bring a Heart Breach player. You're important Heart Breach support players. Keep at it. Attackers have dropped the bomb diffuser. Uh, I'm not a fan of the new Heart Breach gadget. I think it's rather redundant. I don't think it will affect the meta of the game in any way. There is a way to open um, a vet, um, a run-in hole which would require two hard breach gadgets, but I don't think it's worth. In my opinion, you always have space in your lineup to bring a hard breacher. Uh, at the same time, bringing a secondary hard breach, like secondary gadget, which is the hard breach gadget, right? Would mean that now you have two operator operators that can't bring either their flashbang or their nades. And in this meta, nades are very useful to destroy shields and stuff. Whereas flashbangs are also very, 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 very useful at destroying ADSs and magnets. So in my opinion, I think the secondary heart breach gadget is probably useless. I don't think anyone would use it. Should use it. Have you tried the Oregon Cappy heart breach? Uh, I've seen people use... I don't really know what you're talking about. Putting him in an attic. Oh, I guess that is a good use of it if you're putting it in an attic. Bomb yeah. has been located. However, uh, most of the time, you usually just bring a Maverick. And if you have Maverick, you can open everything with Maverick. Crouch hole, run in hole. Like how BDS does it, so yeah. Yeah, but thanks for dropping by, Kiyoshi. It's been very long since I've seen your name. I'll play it with you, actually. <laughs> I don't know, I just don't think Hot Breach Gadget is very useful most of the time. Because you sacrifice having other useful secondary gadgets and at the same time, uh, the walls that you open aren't very useful. And usually, as I said, you always have space for a Hot Breacher, like an Ace, especially Ace, which is very versatile, probably the most versatile Hot Breacher in the game. So yeah. 15 seconds to go. Oh, he smoked himself. 10 seconds remaining. Oh. It's yellow stairs. Um, was there barbs? I'm not too sure. I don't think there was. There was barbs on yellow stairs, but as I, that was a good use of barb. Um, I covered it briefly just now where how you should position your barb wires on staircases, and that is a good example. If you saw that, I'll, I'll probably I'll show you in the screen again later. I like running hard breach on Lion. Um. Ah. Uh, I mean. How do I say this? If you're playing solo queue and you don't have a player playing hard breach, then I can see why. 
you would want to bring it because sometimes you can't really trust your teammates, sadly, but in general, I would say, like, even on Lion, right, you can bring flashbangs. So, with flashbangs, you can clear ADSs. Um, if not, you can bring, like, Claymore, so you put it for, like, windows, and you can rappel somewhere, like, in consulate, you can put a Claymore by yellow, run out, and you can place your window. Defenders, so, it, your bombs it's like, to me, I, I, I don't think it's very worth to bring a hard breach guy here. I've never found a situation where I needed it as well. Do you have time to rehost lobby? Uh, I think it would take a bit too much time because I would have to change the round difference as well. Like I'll set the rounds again. Is it better to put barbs inside the room or outside the room's door? How do I put this? Um, in most cases, you put it inside, Five like right by the door, but towards the inside. This prevents people, enemies, from being able to just run in. However, if you want to put it on the outside, usually that would mean that, um, it's example. Let's say it's just a long hallway. Put it on the outside, which means further from you. This way, they're still gonna be exposed, anyways, and there's not much cover for them to hide behind, anyways. Which means you have advantage in a gunfight is what I'm trying to say. So if you have the advantage in a fight, put it further away. If you have if you just use it normally, just put it on the inside. Put it simply, hard we just a must in the team, yes. This map's a good example, yes. Um I would say as I said, I would say every map requires a hard breacher except for coastline. Like it's a must. If I'm talking about must, then every map besides coastline. Coastline, it's like a, it's up to you. Like right now, thermite using this uh, thermite charger, it, it is required. Like if you don't open this garage wall, it's very very hard to win. <laughs> Um, because this garage wall gives you access to basically half the entire site as you can see on my screen now You would realize that by opening this one thermite charge It exposes Literally the entire bomb site besides pipes which is where the alibi is playing on the top of the screen And just open this one wall after you plant and you play outside where For example this capital is playing or you can even play this far back where the thermite is it's so easy to hold the plant. Basically, in this map and this bomb site, as long as you're able to plant in garage and open up that garage wall, I don't think there's a way for you to really lose <laughs> as an attacker because you can play very, very far angles and it's very hard for defenders, especially like with without having a good optic, it's very hard to fight that long range combat, especially with no info. Oh, the claymore's replaced with hard breach. Oh, I didn't know that. But yeah, in general, I would still say, let's say he had claymore, right? The claymore would be more useful than a hard breach. Which side of the wall do you open and consolidate? Like a white vent side? I'll show you. Because I don't think there's much t talk about for gadgets on the attack. So as you can see right here, you should always open the right side first and then the left. You open both, basically is what I'm trying to say. Most important is on the right, because usually when you plant, you'll be planting in mid, which is in between this black car and the white van. If not, you'll be planting right in front of this white van. Usually those are the, like, the most common places to plant. So you open the right side. Um, reason being, it's very easy to watch white van, which is where this echo is playing. You have a player on yellow stairs, you can watch. You have a player outside the breach, you can watch. You have a player above, you can watch. So, why you open the right side first is simply because if you open the left side first, it's very hard for you to open the right side next. Because by opening the left side, you expose yourself to pipes or red hall or it, it, it's a lot more exposed. Whereas if you open the right side first, there's only white van that can kill you. And it's a very easy place to watch because you can, if you have a teammate watching for you, like on the left side outside the breach, if he's prone, he can see the feet. So that's why you open the right side first and then open the left. But um, some teams, they bring like two hard breaches. If not, they bring like a Maverick Thermite or uh, just a Hibana because um, they would want to open like toilet hatch or lobby hatch, teller's hatch if they're hitting the back, which rarely happens. So, something to note.
Oh wow, there's a lot of chat. Yeah, open white vent first always. Then open the locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Uh the issue is not yellow stairs. Yellow stairs is never an issue. Uh for garage. The issue is always pipes. Uh to clear pipes, um if you don't know what pipes is, it's in the middle of my screen. To clear pipes, you would either have to control the vertical, which is taking piano, which is right here in my middle of the screen. Right now, you open up this flooring right by the door. If not, you can nade him out. So that's the only two ways to clear pipes. Pipes is probably the hardest to clear, but it's the most important to clear. For garage. Because from pipes, you can watch a lot of things. You can watch lockers. You can watch toilet hatch. You can watch the breach, which is the garage, right? And you can watch yellow stairs. Did you open the left side first? Yep, that's what I was saying. Yep, correct. So, uh, we see claymore, grenades, smokes, nades. I like this. Uh, the only issue I have with this setup from the attacking side is that they don't really have any flashbangs. And I know the, enemy, uh, the defenders aren't playing Jaeger or Wamai, but I would say that 90% of the time. Ooh, 90% of the time, you would usually see at least a Jaeger player because it's it's a very strong operator, basically. So, usually you would hunt to have at least one set of bubbles. At least one set. I mean flashbang. At least one set of flashbangs. Just to be able to clear these ADSs. The rest you can kind of clear with your nades or your smoke if you really are desperate. So, yeah. So, maybe in my opinion, let's say if I have to change some operators. I would change beverages from a Nook into maybe a Zofia, if not an Ash, for that flashbang. Or um, maybe the Jackal, since they are, they don't, the Jackal doesn't seem to be able to be uh, enter the building and clear roamers. Uh, maybe instead of a Jackal, where usually you would use the smokes for executing plant. If you struggle to even get to the bomb site itself, maybe you change into things like Zofia or Lion to help you. You know, reach the site easier, basically. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Because Jackal, the real only way to play Jackal is if you're focusing on hunting Romans. Other than that, Jackal is not a very useful operator besides his smoke grenades. But as I said, if you can't even reach that bomb site and make use of the smoke grenades, there is basically no point in bringing Jackal. Oopsie. Wait, what? Legit? Yo! We have 10 minutes left, but yo! Poggy Woggies. I don't even get this amount on my own channel. <laughs> hey, that's Pog. That's sick. Alright, hello to all the beautiful people. Um, What's up? So basically, we're just talking about Rainbow Six, which kind of just going through a bit of a workshop right now, just trying to teach players, new players, especially uh, today's lessons on attachment, like how to set up and operate it, like what gun should you bring, attachments like gun barrel, everything like this, and also at the same time, secondary gadgets, uh, what should you be bringing on different operators, what are you kind of expected to bring, stuff like that. That's what we'll be covering today, so to the new people, just want to update y'all. Hey, yo, this is hype. Mr. Quicks, man, can you screenshot the Twitch front page? I need this. It's for my Attackers need to locate and defuse as many self as they to can. look at and feel that I am loved. Thank you. Love you. Alright. So now, um, we'll talk about... Alright, we're cutting down on time. Um... Do you... Let's say, sorry... Alright, so now if you look at the attacker's utility, right, they have grenade, two sets of grenades, a smoke, a uh, claymore, and a heart breach gadget. Uh, but this time they bring an ace. So as I said, ace is the most versatile heart breacher in the game right now, with his newest introduction. Um, right now if you have a heart breacher, you really don't need a secondary gadget on the heart breach, like right now we see on capital, right? We wouldn't need that, because you already have a heart breacher, you might as well just make use of it properly, right? Um, 
as I said, I don't really recommend you playing Nook. It's not a very team operator. Usually, you at least play Ash to clear ADSs or use your gadget to destroy shield. Uh, if not, play a Zofia to clear off corners with your concussion. So, stuff like that. The grenades are okay. However, I don't really see them making use of their grenades very effectively, which is either you clear from below or you clear tough to clear corners. If not, right now as they don't have an Ash or a Zofia to use their um, impacts to destroy shields and all this kind of utility, using these grenades are a good way to clear shields as well because rather than just breaking the shield of a Zofia, charge, Ash, charge, you can actually get a kill as well. So, something to note. So yeah, we see now vertical play. Good, right? Good. Something that uh, to note as well, uh, I know we're focusing more on the attacking side, but as the round's coming to a close, we see from the defending side, they have two sets of barbed wires, they have a lesion, they have two shields. They can bring two shields, reason being, they already have enough information and utility through the usage of their barbed wires. Uh, having legion is just like an extra bonus, I guess. But if you're wondering, why it's so balanced is also because of this Echo. Now, Echo has access to yokais, which are like drones, right? So this is information. So which this means that the defending lineup right now is very balanced. They have an information gathering operator. They have Bob's operators. And because of this, they can play shield operators. So shields, you can bring it, watch long, hall as, uh, long, long hallways. So as you can watch these long hallways now, it's a lot better. Like personally, I would put a shield right here in the middle, but um, it looks like they didn't opt to do that. But as I'm saying, that's an option. So once you've covered things like information operator, like bringing a Valkyrie or in this case, a uh, Echo, and you've covered the two set barbed wire rule, or if not a one set barb, one lesion, for example, once you covered that, that set of rules, now you have a bit more freedom to bring other operators. Maybe if you don't have enough information, you can bring bulletproof cameras for hallways. Maybe if it's uh, you're finding it very hard to hold off an angle because you know enemy team has a cog, you have this sad hollow side on defense with an SMG, and it's very hard to contest. Put a deployable shoe. You have access to that now, so it's a lot more versatile. It's not use nitro cells, night plant, or nitro cells. You play first floor, bomb site, second floor, boom, easy. So something to note. Yeah, can be very flexible this kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, unfortunately, due to some time constraints, this will be the last round that I'll be covering. So um, right now, I'll be proceeding back to the slides. I will keep this uh, short and hopefully very sweet. To the 300 people, hello again. Um, the last time I saw the number 300, I never, so hi. But um, basically, that's the end for today's uh, escape session. Um, Right now, so this is basically my socials. If you thought that maybe you learned something today or especially, especially if you have any questions, especially if you're more of the shy type because I know some of you personally and you're more um, reserved. If you don't feel so comfortable asking Twitch chat and the workshop chat where everyone can read your question and maybe thinking, oh, everyone's gonna think I'm dumb. Personally, you can um, contact me. Either send me a DM through Instagram or send me a DM through Twitter or even Discord. I will reply you within the day. Uh, basically, as soon as I see your message, uh, or am I free, then I'll look through that. Um, that profile picture is actually my sister took this picture, and I just kept it. I don't care. Um, but basically, if you learn everything, anything today, I highly suggest you to sign up for the next workshops on 3rd October. There should be an announcement coming up soon. And um, also, for those uh, participants who've already come before and actively participated by playing the games, um, if you sign up for at least three more workshops, so let's say you miss, you sign up for two already, now you need one more, sign up for the last one, you will be able to get 2,400 credits for free, or 600, I can't remember, I'm sorry. But basically, free skins, you can even push your battle pass, you can flex on your teammates like, hey, look at me, I got more monies than you. So, not only that, you gain extra knowledge on the game, you learn something new, and I think that's just, you know, beautiful, right? That's wonderful, right? So... I highly suggest you to sign up for the next workshop especially, so do keep a lookout for that. Um, yeah, so this was in collaboration with Rainbow Six SC, like R6SC, which is Rainbow Six Siege Singapore community. 
Um, so basically, uh, it's a community Singaporean community uh, Discord for Rainbow Six players where we often have like events offline or online. Um, also, you can just make friends there, right? And it'll be posted on all the events happening locally in Singapore. So yeah, keep in mind for that. There should be a Discord link somewhere in the chat soon. So feel free to follow that, join that. Everyone's kind of friendly. Everyone is friendly, sorry, not kind of. I'm not friendly at all. But um, basically, yeah, do that. Also, this is in collaboration with Scape's community rallies. So uh, if you like the content that Scape's been coming out with, like this workshop, there's other workshops for other games like Mobile Legends and other stuff. There's podcasts, there's everything, just chatting. So if you like the stuff, do follow this Scape channel, you know, follow up and, you know, see what you like. Maybe you can find something new, maybe meet some new influencers or streamers or YouTubers. Maybe you, you know, find someone that you really like. Um, am I forgetting anything? Um, I don't think so. Am I forgetting? I don't think so. But yeah, I hope everyone learned something today and... I hope you all had a good time. I hope you can enjoy the rest of the Saturday. It was raining today, so I appreciate everyone coming today and not just sleeping in. Um, am I missing anything? But yes, yes, yes. Another reminder, there will be another escape uh, thing going on later, the Gateway Program. So if you're interested in that, do stay in this Scape Esports channel as there'll be something going on later at 2 p.m. in about 15 minutes as I end this uh, workshop. So stay tuned for that. I'm sure it'll be something very entertaining, very fun. Um, if I miss out anything, please forgive me. But yeah, uh, hope y'all had a good time today. What's Gateway Program? Uh, I'm not so sure. But I think it's exciting. <laughs> I think they're inviting some, uh, I don't know, man. But it's basically like a streamer's workshop. Yeah, it's like a yeah streamer. Yeah, they'll be inviting streamers and stuff. So yeah. So if interested in that, stay tuned, really. And uh, to the new people here, hello, hello. And without further ado, thanks everyone for participating. As always, I've seen some familiar faces. I've seen you guys improve. I actually, if you can watch through back the VOD, I think a lot of you are very good at using your utility now as we've covered that for about two workshops ago. So I think that's very, very good. And a lot of you are finding your roles in the team already. So I think that's very good to see. So hopefully you can do better in your rank games or maybe competitively anything like that. John, that's a very long message. I will definitely reply you even personally. But thank you, everyone. And I think this is all from me today. And bye-bye. Thank you, Raymond, for the follow. Raymond, dude. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, dude, I end exactly on time, man. 144. Hey. Bye-bye. Peace out. Playbox out. See y'all in the next workshop. If not, follow my Instagram because I'm pretty... Bye-bye.